everybody. Well, today I have something really special for you because I have a tin of gorgeous, pristine Ocetra caviar from Marshallburg Farm in the hills of North Carolina. I included them in the second season of Tastemakers, and I'm going to show you how to make the most of this incredibly delicious indulgence. So let's get cooking. So caviar, it is something that is obviously an indulgence. It tends to be pretty pricey and there's a reason for that. Sturgeon, the Russian sturgeon that produced this Ocetra caviar, it takes years and years for them to reach maturity. And it's really important that when you are looking for caviar, that you make sure that it is sustainable, that it is environmentally responsible because sturgeon are critically endangered in the wild. So the team at Marshallburg Farm, they focus on sustainability from beginning to end. Not only are they breeding the Russian sturgeon right there on location, they also manage their farm, their aquaculture farm, in a way where there isn't any runoff. And so they recirculate the water through the system, constantly purifying it. So this is a caviar that you can feel very good about buying and also eating. And so my favorite way to enjoy caviar is, you're going to think other than obviously on a spoon, um, is on a potato chip. And that might sound a little bit crazy, but the potato chip has that, like a Lay's style, really thin potato chip. It has um, just a little bit of salt and a really kind of light potato flavor. So I'm gonna show you how to kind of mimic that by actually making these really tiny, fun potato latkes. But I really wanted to incorporate that potato flavor and kind of do it with something that's pretty fun. And those potato latkes are delicious. The main thing that will distinguish a good latka from a bad latka is making sure that you get all of the moisture wrung out of your shredded potato and your shredded onion. If there's moisture, it's not gonna get super crispy. And so what I'm looking for for this caviar are just like quarter size, tiny little pancakes that are gonna be super crispy. We're gonna fry them up really fast. And then we're just gonna serve the caviar with a little bit of creme fraiche. It is a very simple preparation, but trust me, simplicity is what you want when you have something as spectacular as that caviar. I'm gonna take this russet potato and I'm just gonna grate it. I'm gonna grate some onion and I'm gonna squeeze all of the water out. And now we have our friend's onion. I have a tea towel. You don't want to use cheesecloth because it won't be effective. You, the tea towel is the perfect thing to squeeze all these potato shreds and onion shreds in. So I'm just gonna dump all of this in here, head over to the sink and squeeze the heck out of it. And now I have an egg. Adding in just a little bit. And then also some breadcrumbs, not flour. A tablespoon or so for now. I'm just gonna mix this up, see where we land on the texture. Everything is evenly distributed and the strands of potato are kind of falling apart. They aren't super sticky with each other. We are looking good. So I'm just gonna head over to the stove and fry these babies up. So I have all of my tiny little latkes right here and I've let them cool off a little bit because you don't want it to be hot next to the caviar that you've been trying to keep cold this entire time. So I've kind of built just these little caviar towers essentially. Just a small spoonful of the caviar topped with just a tiny bit of creme fraiche. If you can't find creme fraiche, then just use sour cream and thin it with just a teeny tiny bit of water. It's so beautiful. Now, you might be wondering why I'm using a shell spoon. It's not just to be fancy. The shell spoon protects the flavor of the caviar. If you use a metal spoon, it actually can make the caviar taste metallic. So that's why the shell spoons are used. And I also wanna mention that beyond caviar, the folks at Marshallburg also make smoked sturgeon. And I have developed a recipe for a smoked sturgeon salad 
with celery and green apple that you'll find on the website along with the recipe for these latkes that you can serve along with your Ocetra caviar. Gorgeous. I can't wait. I've got to give this a taste. So the potato is a little bit crispy, but not too much. It has a really, really light flavor that allows that briny, buttery richness of the caviar to come through and the creme fraiche just kind of adds one extra layer of, you know, creaminess. It's so good. So I hope you enjoyed this very simple, indulgent recipe. I know that I did. I'm gonna plow my way through the rest of these right now. And of course I'm pairing it with some bubbles. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.